with a faster low time bank wherever, whenever. Be in control and transfer funds or pay bills quicker with just a few taps and a swipe. Plus, we're serious about security. Want real-time notifications for all your transactions? Check. Log in with fingerprint? Check. Turn your credit card on and off? Triple check. Protected. Your money is safe and secure. Bank wherever, whenever. You choose with the new Scotia app. Oliver, is who that hollering out my name? Who are you following me? Go ask Kosha Bank. Quick. Go into bank. Whole foot like we fit on our yard and bank online. Ain't that safe? It's the safest thing. Just download the Scotia app or go to Scotia online for everything like transfer or check your balance and everything online free. Free? Bank with Scotia online. Let me show you. You put that money with me phone, eh? Welcome and thank you for joining Scotia Live. I'll be your moderator this afternoon and my name is Casia Johnson Vaughan and I'm Senior Manager for Professional Partnerships Caribbean North and Central. So today we are talking about a really exciting topic for me. It's one where you know SMEs are that I'm extremely passionate about. And so we want to talk to you about you know what are the requirements for you know maintaining a business and also how do you sustain and thrive maintain a thriving business during the pandemic and post-pandemic. But you know, an SME running a business is always very risky, especially in difficult times such as this. But I want to share with all SMEs, it's important that you focus on you know, building a culture that is resilient, that is creative, and that is team-oriented. And you know, Scotia Bank, we have always been supporting this sector for many years because we recognize the importance of this to the economy. We've been supporting them not only through financial solutions, but we've been supporting also in the form of business support, business development, also finding other services to help to expand their markets. And most importantly, something that we really take pride in is capacity building training. Everyone should know about our Scotia Bank Vision Achiever program, how we have been helping at least so far more than 200 SMEs to take their business to the next level by participating in a 17-week building um, capacity building coaching program with Marcia Wunchoy of Action Coach. But guess what? Today, I have two gentlemen with me in studio, and they are going to be sharing with me Shamir Bramwell, who is Acting Branch Manager for Port Antonio Branch, and we have Ron Scott from Kestrel Industries Limited. So Shamir is going to share with us on the business banking perspective, you know, what are some of the things that you need to and the requirements for getting setting up your business and also just some guidelines as what SMEs need to know for managing their business. And we'll ask Ron, the real businessman, to share with us today some practical insights on how he has maneuvered through this difficult time and also you know, how he's prepared his company for the future. But most importantly, we want to hear from you. So we're going to invite you to share your questions with us, whether you're joining us from Zoom or from IG Live. And we'll try our very best to answer as many questions as possible. But you know, let me get into the meat of the matter. I want to speak to Shamir. So Shamir, you know we're in a financial sector. And of course, one of the, the, well, one of the challenges that we face is always assessing our customers and providing the right solutions for them. And so I want you to share with us from you know, the banking side how important it is, what SMEs need to know, how do they become bankable, and also what are the requirements that they need to put in place to structure and organize their business. Thank you, Kasia. And I, I think that is a very, very important question. I realize that over the years in dealing with small business customers, um, the issue that most customers have starting a business is that they pr probably started the business on the side and they have their personal accounts. And so because of the convenience of already using their personal accounts, they start to use that personal account to operate their business. And I implore everyone, please do not do so. 
having your personal account and your business account separately create a structure around the business and so that you can separate the two. It helps you to initiate a relationship with the bank. The bank needs to understand how the business is operating, the cash flows that are being passed through the account, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And these information helps us to help you in order to grow the business. And so we want to ensure that our customers benefit from a, bank, from a business bank account because there are a few things that you actually get with the business bank account that you don't actually get with your personal account. I mean, there's a dedicated business banker that you can call for any of your banking needs. This business banker is supposed to be partnering with you to show you how you can be operationally efficient and also to grow your business and expand your business. And so it is very, very important in having this type of relationship with, with your banker. Um, in addition to that, you actually get access to um, business online banking where you can pay your suppliers, pay your, your staff online. Um, it helps you to manage your records as well because every single transaction you do through your business account is recorded somewhere. You can pull it up, reconcile, and see exactly where you are to date. And so I believe that it is important that business customers out there open their accounts so that they can take advantage of all of these services that we have to offer. It also includes point of sale services, um, e-commerce services, um, looking at uh, the business in such a way where we can actually grant you guys credit in order to grow the business. And so we don't want to take it for granted because I had a customer when I just started small business and this customer, she manufactured awnings mm -hmm. and she came to me to open a business account and her reason was that her business was expanding and she wanted to change suppliers, but this was a large supplier. And so the supplier was a little bit skeptical when she explained that she didn't have a business account. And so she came to us because she wanted that supplier's trust. And so I realized that even larger businesses out there look at smaller businesses to see if they are actually structured in such a way where they have, um, they have advantages to these facilities. Right. And so large businesses don't want to know that you know, you're just here today, but they're trying to build a partnership so that they can do business with you further on. Yeah, that's very, very important. You know, Shamir, people always complain, you know, you hear from different customers. Why the bank always asking me for so many documents, all these things, you know? Why do you need to have a business plan? Why do you need to have a financial statement, you know? Um, why do you need TCC? But again, you know, it's very important. You were highlighting some of the things earlier, but I want you to, you know, further expound on the importance of having of having these documents and why we ask customers for it and not, you know, and the benefits to their company. No man, definitely, definitely, um, Kesia. Uh, and before I go into, into into compliance, I mean, uh, businesses should not underestimate the power of a business plan. You know, we, especially businesses that are just starting out, a business plan helps the bank to understand where the business is going, um, how it is that the business is gonna get there, so that we can better be able to create a suite of products to help you to move, to move your business to the, next, to the next level. And don't look at a business plan as a requirement of the bank. Mm -hmm. The business plan actually helps you to maneuver your way through your goals. It, it forces you to do research in, in order to understand the industry that you're going in. What are the economic factors that would affect your business? Um, these are the things that you look at when you're creating a business plan. And so it is really a guide for you to, to, ex to know exactly where you are and where you want to go. And then just quickly tell me about the compliance part, about the TCC and the importance <laughs> of having that before, you know. Definitely, and then definitely. And move forward to run. Definitely. Um, so compliance, compliance, really what I want to explain about compliance is that we are, Scotiabank is big on compliance. And in compliance, it requires you to be structured in such a way. Now, there are rules and regulations everywhere. And so as a commercial bank, we are governed by BOJ, and there are certain requirements that we have to satisfy when we're onboarding small business customers. And so this is why we ask for TCC and financials, because the BOJ requires us to, to have certain information from that business customer when we're onboarding them. And so we need to know uh, where's the source of funds of the equity or that you're starting the account? Um, we need to understand uh, who is the actual owner of the business. 
we need to collect KYC documents for the, the directors, the ultimate beneficial owners. And so having these documentation will have us being compliant when we're onboarding our customers. And most importantly, an independent assessment done on the company itself. An independent assessment would be financial statements, which are done by an accountant. Right. And so we, we, we don't want to underestimate the financial part of it because I realize in doing business with customers over the years, that is always a sore point. Right, it is. It's always a sore point. And so our, I realize that our business customers, they will do financials when they want something, but they don't realize that this, it is actually important for their business as well. Um, financial statements allows you to see the performance of your business, understand the health of your business. Um, with an accountant, the accountant can do your financial. They provide you with financial guidance. Right. And I know that you know, every business customer thinks that, that they can do everything. But I, I, would, I would encourage these business customers to leave that to the expertise of the accountant because the accountant have certain skills that they can use these financial ratios, assessing your financials to show you even how long have I had this um, inventory on hand based on the equity that I invested in my company, what are my returns on these, on these investments? Right. How liquid am I? All of these things can, can be pulled from a financial statement. Very good advice, Shamira. Thank you so much for sharing. So now that you've shared with us from the financial perspective, I know Ron, to tell us from a more practical, being a business man in what, operation for about 13 years or more, Ron, mm -hmm. you're going to just tell us, you know, quickly the importance of having a business banking account and also the importance of having, you know, the, the cash flow. Um, of also having a business plan and share with us your quick insights. So briefly, Ron, you can share with us now. Good afternoon, viewers. Um, Kestrel Industries is an importation and distribution company. Yeah. We've been around for 13 years. We trade primarily in food commodities, beans, grains, beverage, snack, frozen meats, fish. And <clears throat> we have had a relationship with the bank ever since we started. Now, it's important to have a relationship with the bank because the, your, ba your, your business banking account is like the platform that links you with your customers and links you with your suppliers. Um, you, can, you cannot access credit from overseas suppliers without first having a business <coughs> bank account. In fact, one of the things they ask for sometimes is, is, a, is, is a reference from your bank. So it's very important. And also, your bank accounts serve as a source document for your financial statements. So in a sense, your, your bank account is your business. Um, when, when if, 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 if somebody goes to your workplace, they see how you manage your inventory and your staff. But if they want to see how you manage your money, they go to your bank account. And so it, if you have any ambition as a business person to grow, you need to have a business bank account. It is what will allow you to form partnership with the, with the bank in the future, and it tells an outsider how you manage your affairs. Excellent, Ron. As it relates to a, a business plan, when we started our business, we, we were required to, op to do a business plan uh, we got our first financing from Scotia Bank, and we were required to do a business plan. And the interesting thing about doing a business plan is that it, it is more beneficial to the, to the company doing it than to the company requesting it. Because a business plan sends you on a, on a journey of exploration. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at different areas, you look at the industry, you look at your competitors, you look at the viability of the product, you look at so many different areas. And so at the end of the day, you answer your own question. It tells you whether your business is, the business you're trying to pursue is viable or not viable. Yes, thank you so much, Ron, for sharing that insight. So I'm going to move into question and answer segment, but just before that, I wanted to share with customers who are watching that if you need assistance, you know, pretty much how to write a business plan and you may not have the funds, you can quickly um, speak to your business banker. We have the DBJ voucher program, which gives you about $200,000 in grant for you to write a business plan or to do your marketing, etc. So speak to our business banker. Well, now I'm going to move into some questions from our viewers. So our first question that we have here is from Arlene from Instagram. And Arlene wants to know, what do I need to, 
open a business banking account or business account, Shamir? Okay, great, great question, Arlene. Um, the requirements for a business account really depends on how the business is registered. But there are a few things, standard things that, are, that run right across the board. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Is the business registered? So we need registration documents for the business. We definitely need KYC documents for the owners of the business, the management staff of the business, and also we would need to do an independent assessment or a financial statement from an accountant. Uh, depending on how the business is registered as well, you would also need TCC and also um, documentation that would tell us who is the ultimate beneficial owner. So it depends on how the business is registered, but there are a few things right across the board. You can talk to um, the business bankers at Scotia Bank, and they'll be able to assist you in fine-tuning what those specific requir requirements are. Thank you, Shamir. Moving to the next question, it's from Annie. Um, she's coming from Zoom, and her question is, how long does it take to get a point-of-sale machine from a business? Well, Annie, I, I, I like that question because, you know, Scotia Bank has revamped their process, yes. and so it is a lot quicker now in terms of getting a machine. So I would say the, the process after assessing, because we have to assess the customer, after the assessment and um, the approval, it takes about a week, no more than a week, for, for you to actually or, get the... Or it could be less. Or it could be less. Up to a week to yes, get the yes, yes. actual machine in your facility. But usually we say a week because just right. in case of there's any obstacles or probably any returns or anything like that, just to manage your customer expectation. But it can be less. I've seen it in less. Okay. Thanks again, Shamir. So moving to another question, we have Tanya from Instagram. And her question is, how can I get my deposits done in light of the restrictive measures by the government regarding COVID-19? Tanya, great question. Um, there are a lot of customers that are benefiting from our, our, our alternate channels right now. Um, we have, for the sole traders, you can actually deposit directly to your business account through the ATM. We have our night deposit channel as well, where you get a dedicated key where you can access that shoot, get bags, make your deposit, and lodge your funds at any time of the, well, because of curfew, it wouldn't be any time, but you are able to access this shoot without even accessing the bank any at all. And so we encourage our customers to use this because it is a safe way to do banking. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so Shemir, the next question we're gonna move into is from Leah um, from Zoom, and her question is, how can online banking benefit my business? Leah, I love this question. I, I, I love this question as well, Leah, because we've been on a drive to ensure that all our business customers have access to online banking especially in these unprecedented times, um, we have to keep ourselves safe and we have to do banking safe as well. And so online banking gives you access to paying your staff online, paying your suppliers online, doing international wire transfers, um, doing independent assessment of your financials as well because you, are, you're, you can pull on your statements online as well. Yeah. And so you get access to all of these things at the touch of your finger without accessing the bank any at all. And so I, I encourage persons to yes. get access to And just to, to add to, you, to your point, you mm -hmm. also get to pay your bills. And, and most importantly, you can view your account to just to see how you can manage your day-to-day -day operations. Definitely, right? definitely. Yes, so it's excellent. So I encourage you, do get, make sure you get a, um, your, your online banking up and running. So we're going to go to another question. This is from interesting name, Dom's the, Dom's the Man from Instagram. And he wants to know, do I need an accountant to prepare my financial statements? Well, the thing is, I would encourage you to get an accountant to prepare your financial statements. The, the accountant have the expertise to look at your business, look at your journals, put everything together, and prepare the financial statements for you. Um, so, yes. And so there's an advantage, there's an advantage mm -hmm. in, in terms of getting the accountant to do so. You can do your own management of um, financials, but why, why hoard yourself with that job when you can have the expertise of an accountant to do it for you? They have the knowledge, they have the expertise right. in order to show you your financials and to guide you on your financial journey. And as Ron would have highlighted earlier, that the accountant is like the best person you need to have, is like Definitely. your best partner. Definitely. They tell you the health of your business, they tell you basically, you know, what you need to look out for and to guide you when you need to pay your taxes, how to make sure that the money works and structure, right, Ron? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Definitely. So we're going to move into one more question. And this question is from Kathy from Zoom. So Kathy is asking, what 
why, um, why does it take so long to open a business account? <laughs> so Shamir, we have to smile because this is what we get all the time from customers, right? But it's important for them to know the process and why we require certain things. So let's shed some more light for me, um, Shamir. Okay, well, and, and you know, thank you, Kathy. And that's a great question as well. Yes, Because we get it all the time, as all Kasia the time. says. Um, and, and first, I, I just want to touch on what is required sure. for the account. And, and so, as I said before, looking at registering your business, is the business registered, getting KYC documents for the ultimate beneficial owner, the so management just stop team. You. You've been saying KYC for some persons who don't oh. know what it is. It's okay. know your customer. Know your customer. Right. And that includes the ID, right. CRN, those type of documents that you would give in terms of opening a, any account at all. And so we, we want to understand what the business is doing, where the business is going, who are the ultimate beneficial owners of the business, and the financial assessment of the business tells us a little bit about the strength of the business and where we need to go in terms of guiding that business along. And so I wouldn't necessarily say that it takes a long time. I would say that it really depends on if you have all the documentation right now it shouldn't it take about maximum three hours. It shouldn't. It maximum, sh right? If you ever or less. Kesia? Yes, yes, Shamir? <laughs> I, 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 I opened a bank account, a business bank account last week. Uh -huh. And it took us about 45 minutes Amen. in total. See? Once the customer has every, everything. Uh, everything on file, we can open. It's just basically how fast we can click along to get that bank account right. open. Well, I did that specific because, you know, I want people to know it's not that much, right? <laughs> so thank you, Shamir. So now we're going to move into the, the, the meat of the matter. This is the part that I'm actually looking forward to because it's really exciting to hear, you know, what Ron has done so far, why his company is being so successful, and also just to see how we as a bank can help. So, you know, of course, we're moving in, we're, we're in a pandemic, and we've seen how many companies have struggled. Some have managed to stay afloat. Some actually don't exist anymore. There are others who have actually um, found ways to maneuver and, exp and expand and find opportunities. And there are others who are, um, actually are doing very well, like mm -hmm. Ron right now. And there are others who have looked and said, you know, boy, with the reinvention of this, I may need to do business a different way. We've even seen, for example, um, companies like Netflix, right, who started yes, first yes. with using... Um, they were doing it on DVD, but they quick moved to being online and look how successful it is. So, you know, I want to, for you to share with me first, Shamir, and then Ron, I'm going to go to you next. So, Shamir, just share with me from a, um, just at least one insight that you can tell me. What do you think that companies need to do right now in order to um, maintain and sustain a business? But before I go into that, I want to mention something because this is critical. Cash is king, right? No, and in every business, what I want to say, I just remember that it's important. I was reading an article and it said, you know, in this time of the pandemic, every single company should ensure that they have a proper cash flow management in place. Because without that, your business, you know, you can't sustain your business. Totally. And so um, I want you to shed some light because a lot of companies need to understand being liquid and, you know, and ensuring that you have a proper cash flow, especially during this time and moving forward. Because I don't know when we're going to get out of the situation, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, looking forward to the next year or two, post-pandemic, you know, how do you maintain a strong cash flow in your business? So you can share the importance to us, Shamir, from a business per banking perspective, what is important of having a, a proper cash flow management um, in place for your business? Uh, thank you, Casey. I love that question because, you know, on, a, on paper, a business can be making profit. But if you don't have the sufficient liquidity to run the operations of your business, like your daily operation, you will be heading downhill, I'm telling you. And so it's really about how you can structure your business to ensure that you have proper cash flow management. And proper cash flow management is looking at um, the inflows and the outflows of your company. Um, understanding where am I today to how far am I from breaking even? Mm -hmm. Where should I be in the next week? And how much, what target should I set myself in order to ensure that I can cover my daily expenses? And so if we're not on the ball in terms of managing our cash flow, then we will, as a business, the business will not be able to manage their operation. And so a lot of companies fall into a hole because they haven't been knowing their numbers, they, they, they haven't had proper cash flow management, and so they look to the bank to help them to borrow, to borrow to get them out of the hole. And so 
something I want to remind persons and business persons is that the bank is really there to help you to grow and expand, not for you to borrow to get out of the hole. Because once a business has to borrow to, to operate daily, it means that they're already heading downhill. Yeah. So, so look, at, look at everything. Look at um, your receivables, your payables. These things are, are, are revenues that you can actually look at in terms of managing cash flow. Thank you, Shamir. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go over to the man who really knows <laughs> how, it, how, it go, how it works. You know, um, Ron, you, are, you live this. You talk this every day as part of your business. So can you share with me, you know, you, you, you know, have some very good insights about what you did to make sure that you maintain cash flow that you can also share with our viewers and, you know, to position themselves not only just during the pandemic, but post-pandemic. Mm -hmm. All right, um, cash flow is really the movement of cash throughout the business. Mm -hmm. um, how it enters the business, how it leaves the business. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest cash flow catastrophes is if you pay out money faster than you receive it. That is, that, that is where you are just heading for, for destruction. Mm -hmm. You have to receive money faster than you're paying it out. And so, before I get into, the, into cash flow management, I also want to mention that sales is not profit. Mm -hmm. And I find that it's bad enough that staff don't know this, but it is, it is even worse that some business owners don't understand that sales is not profit. And i give you a practical example. Mm -hmm. You might sell something for, you might use a million dollars to buy something you make 20% mark, you put a 20% mark up on that. That's 200,000. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to spend from the 200,000 mm -hmm. because you're supposed to spend from your profit. Mm -hmm. What a lot of businesses do is that the million, the 1 million plus the 200,000, they now have 1.2 million and they just spend from the 1.2 million. And so when you spend and you eat too much into your cash flow that you, 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 you surpass your profit and start eating into your capital. And what it does, it weakens your income generating machine. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it, that's very, very important that you spend from your profit. Excellent. Now, <clears throat> on the subject of cash flow and in our situation and what we had to do, for, for you to really survive in the pandemic, you have to be liquid. You have to be as liquid as possible. And some of the companies that have managed to survive so far are those who have built up for themselves a safety net. Now, in our case, we had to engage our customers because cash flow into the business either comes in through loans, through facilities you have at the bank, or whether somebody decides to lend you some money, or from your cash sales, or, or from monies collected from receivables. We know this. And so in our case, we had to sit with our clients. We had to explain to them that you know, we need some help. And we like to use the word help because it, it's, it's more palatable for customers, and they're, they're more inclined to want to pay because you're not coming with a big stick and say you want your money now. So, yeah. you know, so those customers whom we gave like you know 30 days credit 15 days credit, we have had to sit with those customers and rework those terms we we said to them that you know we'll have to restock faster the panic buying means that they are going to sell faster and so if they are going to sell faster we hope that they can pay us faster so we can pay the suppliers faster yes so we have had to do that and one of the things with us is that we try to test and measure everything. And we know, we know our numbers. We know that our top 30 customers are responsible for 80% of our sales. And so we, we knew who to go and talk to. And we did. And our customers came through. Excellent, Ron. <coughs> I love that. So I just want to ask you another question quickly. You know, so how did you able to manage your inventory during this time? And any tips you want to share with you know, our viewers who are listening and watching right now? All right, um, what we generally, we do a monthly stock count. Mm -hmm. um, but the speed at which goods were moving, we had to do weekly stock counts, and in some cases, daily stock counts. We had established um, reorder levels per item, 
uh, we had to revamp that because your reorder level kept changing because of the speed at which goods were moving. And so what we had to do was to connect with our suppliers and did, we, we had to do some restructuring to our supply chain process okay. so that goods would keep flowing. Excellent. Thank you. I have another question. So, you know, relationship is key in any business, right? Um, and, you know, the, your, whether it's your business banker or your supplier, and I just want you to tell me what, you know, how did that play a key role in, you know, maneuvering now and even moving forward post-pandemic for any company to establish relationships with whether your supplier or your bankers, how important that, has, that was for your success? Well, one the advice, let me speak with the bank first. Um, we have an excellent business banker, um, Owen Bell, and we have been blessed um, with several very reliable and dependent business bankers um, over the years. And our business bankers have always made us feel as if we are Scotia Bank's only customer. And, 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 and the worst part of it is that we believed. We believed them. <laughs> you know, so that whatever you want and ask, yes. your business banker is not inclined to tell you no. What they will do is say, let us look at your numbers. Right. You know, they won't always tell you yes, but they rarely tell you no. Right. And so, you know, throughout the pandemic, we have had to lean heavily on the bank and the bank came through for us. Excellent. As it relates to supplies, you know, one of the problems with, you know, that I've seen with small businesses, certainly, is that they pay themselves before their suppliers. And I think it's important that you pay your suppliers first. When you do that, you leave the, 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 the avenue open for goods to continuously flow. And from your goods that are coming in, you have a business. Excellent. Right. <clears throat> so it's important to maintain good relationship with the suppliers and also that when you decide to access credit from other suppliers, you're able to use your existing suppliers as credit references. Thank you, Ron. Great insight. So one final thing I want you to share with us is, you know, people, they are vital to any sustenance of any business. If you don't have people, there is really no business, right? And I want you to tell me, you know, you know, it's important during this pandemic and also going forward that we maintain the health and wealth of our staff. So you can share with me some strategies that you think companies should look at and consider what you did during and post-pandemic. Um, well, one of the things we did with our staff, um, we, we did a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, before, we would have, like, large general meetings. Um, but when, when, when the pandemic hits, we realized that it was affecting staff, you know, so we moved to having one-on-one -on -one because we recognized that a lot more would be demanded of, of the staff. They would be required to work later, come to work earlier, and so we wanted to know what their general health was. We sat them down, we spoke to them. We're not trained counselors, but, you know, we... We, 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 we take the time out to listen to them, and that is, that is very important. You know, when you build a business from the ground up, every job position is personal to you because at some stage in the game, you, did, you would have had to do the same thing. When the business started, I had, I had to drive the forklift, I had to help to lift bags, I have to do delivery. And so every job in the company is important to the management. And so we don't take it for granted that because somebody is doing a particular job that they're not important. So we, we, sh we listen to them, we talk to them. Another thing we had to do was do job rotation mm -hmm. so that you can, staff get a chance to see how other desks work. And one of the things that that do, it helps for relationship among peers, persons who would, you know, would probably be, get frustrated with other departments because they feel like, you know, they're working harder, they feel like, you know, there's not much synergy and so on. They get a chance to see how the other desks work and when they get to see how the other desks work, then they're better able to appreciate, you know, how, how the business operates and, and that it's a, it's a, Excellent. 
Thank you so much for sharing, Ron. Very good insight. So I'm just going to close off quickly by asking Shamir now, you know, back to you from a financial perspective. You know, I want you to share um, just maybe two key points, you know, that business should consider in maintain and sustain your business going forward. Because, you know, savings is critical, right? And because it's a critical thing, I want you to give me one or two advice about this, what you'd what you would say to your customers, you know, in terms of rolling the tides and looking forward for the future. Thank you, Kasia. I mean, sustaining a business, these are unprecedented times, as we all know. And so I always encourage my customers to use, mm -hmm. utilize your, the, your, your resources. I mean, some customers, if it is that you see an opportunity now in this pandemic and you want to go ahead at it, look at your resources. If it is that you have savings somewhere or funds invested somewhere, you can actually use that as security. And that will give you a better rate at the bank. And so one of the things that that does is it automatically lowers the debt cost. And so we have to look at every way where we can lower our cost in these times. Another way is look at how you manage your debt structure. I mean, you probably have um, loans here and there. Contact your business banker, talk to him and, or her and see how you can maybe consolidate, redo some restructuring, lower your monthly payments, see how best you can lower that debt cost because that will also help you. As Rowan says, lowering your cost and actually giving you some margin in terms of your profit. Right. So those are the two things that I would give at this time. Okay, thank you. So I just want to close up, but before I move into question and answer, I want to, I always have to give some ad additional advice to our listeners, our viewers. So the question, what I want to share with you is that if there are any companies right now that you want to, you want to get assistance, whether it is, you know, for, finance, for finances, you can always speak to our business banker. We have the DBJ credit enhancement facility, and that's quickly just to say what that is. If you are, it's actually, it's a pool of funds that are available to SMEs who are looking to, you know, basically expand their business or want help in this time. And what it does is offer you up to 90% guarantor. Um, and what it means is if you basically are not able to find the collateral to back up the loan, they will give you the 90% and work with us at Scotia Bank. So quickly, you can always speak to your business banker just in case you want to hear about some additional facilities that we have to assist you during this time. And I want to also encourage you, you may consider equity funding if you are an SME in this time or even because that's the best way to always can generate some new funds, right? Definitely. So moving into the question and answer segment, um, we're going to take some questions from our viewers. Uh, let me see if there are any questions that we want to take right now. Right, we have a question here from Ashley from Instagram. And her question is, does Scotia Bank have any programs to help customers with personal and business development? I love this question. <laughs> I realize it's your, I realize this one is yours. This is my baby. This is yours. This, this is, is yours, my please, baby. Yeah. Yes, I love this question. At Scotia Bank, we are big, big on um, capacity building and supporting our customers. And so what we do have in program, as mentioned earlier to you, we have the Scotia Bank Vision Achiever Program, which is where we give actually 25 SMEs an opportunity to benefit from a, um, it's actually a 17 week coaching program that helps every company that is in that program to move from one state to the next. I can guarantee you once you do that program, you will never ever be the same or your business will not be the same because Marcia Wuncho of Action Coach does an excellent job of helping new customers. We just um, launched the 2021 series and so we have a batch of 25 next year. You can actually sign up for the program. In addition to that, we also have a series of webinars. So this is one of them that we actually have live here we share with you and we also have several throughout the, um, the year that will invite our customers that you can come and learn about different topics. We talk about cash flow management, managing mm -hmm. your, um, your business in a crisis, etc. So these are some of the other initiatives. And we also partner with other institutions to put on other webinars and offer other programs, even the Export Max, that we currently work with Jampro. That is where we actually help 50 companies to bring their products um, export to overseas. So there are many other initiatives that we work with and work with PSOJ as well to do other like the, the AFI program yeah, AFI. where we're looking at how to make funding more accessible to customers. So we have several initiatives. So moving on to the next question now, this is from Travis from Zoom. And his question is, are there different loan types for industries and what are the different types of business loan? Shamir? All right, Travis, very good question. Um, loans, loans are what we use to, end, to, to really help our businesses grow. And so I wanted us to get that out there. 
So once we're lending to a company, it's really for expansion and it's really for, to help that business grow. And so we don't have loans depending on the type of industry, but we look at what it is that you're trying to attain. And so if it is that you want to um, uh, acquire assets, we have, we have loans to acquire assets. We have um, revolving facilities that helps you with with inventory, um, our working capital. And so a lot of mistakes a lot of businesses make is that they come asking for a loan, but when you speak to your business bank and the business bank assess your situation, assess your financials and look at the business itself, sometimes they will be able to really put a suite of products together so that they can actually assist you in growing. Yes, excellent. I like this question, but I think this looks like I should probably bring this to Ron as a businessman. <laughs> Tony and W, um, she actually sent an email and asking, I would like to know what's the best way to sustain a business as we are in a pandemic and what are the best ways to invent my own business? So Ron, you can probably share, you were sharing some before, those qu some quick insight from a businessman, no answer this question. A uh, very good question, um, Tony. Uh, <clears throat> in the best way to invest in your business, right now is to try to, 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 mm -hmm. to, to know who your customers are and to offer them something else. Sure. Um, like for example, in our business, okay, and I'll we, give other we started a meet division um, during the pandemic because prior to the pandemic, we were mainly in dry bulk products, but customers kept asking us for cold storage and frozen products. And so we launched out into that area. I know it accounts for about 40% of our business. And so if you, have a, if you have a current business now, look at what else your customer need. Um, the experts call it wallet share. We too are beneficiaries of the, the Scotia uh, Vision Saver, where we learned all of these things that you don't always have to go out there and find 100 or 150 customers, but you can sell the same customers a lot more things. So you want to first look at what else you can supply to your customers. That's a good place to start in reinvesting in your business. Uh, to, as it relates to sustaining your business in the pandemic, uh, just be cautious with your expenses and just try to try to look at different business opportunities, you know, where you can launch out. It doesn't necessarily have to be within the field that you are, but perhaps you can assess your own competencies as a business person and see what else you have a passion for. Right. Because the pandemic is a time when you, you are able to, 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 to find opportunities. It's really not just the effect, the negative effect on businesses, but Sometimes it opens doors, you know, mm. people need additional things. I've seen um, even a lot of businesses have grown out of the pandemic. You know, people are making masks, people are designing masks. And so there are a lot of different opportunities. But the first place to start is to look at your customer base and see what else you can offer them. Because there and then you have a very focused and an and, 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 and already ready market. Ready market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I, want, what I want to add to that, Rowan, is about partnerships. You know, it's always to look at, you know, depending on your products you offer, you can decide to partner. So, for example, you're in auto business, you're in auto parts, and then you have another customer who um, may be doing delivery solution for auto parts. You can probably decide that, okay, you can join with that person and you combine and offer a combo package. So I think exactly. that's stuff like that, I think you need to think about it, look at, look at your industry, what right. your competitors are doing, and look at what you could do um, as an edge and partner with whoever in this area, right? right. Excellent. And, and in addition to that case, yeah, yeah. Um, I do have a customer that uh, she sells here, mm -hmm. and so she was looking at her customers. What she did was she did a, a small little market research, right. and that market research was in the zone of what Ron was saying, her existing customers. She was looking at what it is that they need right now and how she can provide it. And so a lot of them were afraid to come out and actually come and purchase. Yeah, and so she went online um, with her business on Instagram. Uh, she partnered with a, 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 a company that would help assist her in terms of delivering right to their home. Mm. 
And so she started to make profits. And so she was so excited about it that, you know, she came and shared that story. So I just wanted to share that story as well. Excellent. Thank you, Shamir. So moving to another question. This is from Zoom. And we have, should entrepreneurs wait um, a specific duration to start a business investment strategy slash a portfolio? Okay. So I, I want you want to take that, um, Shamir, or Ron looks like he wants to say, <laughs> who wants to take this question? Uh, Ron can start out and I, and I finish out. Okay, so Ron, you know, you, you, you're an entrepreneur. Do you think that you should wait for a specific period to, you know, launch a portfolio, whether for investment? What advice would you um, give to this person? All right, I, I don't think, well, one school of thought would say timing is everything, but mm -hmm. I think you, you have to go, as the business grows, you take on additional risks. And I think, you know, one of the things that cause businesses to run into problems sometimes is when they, when they depart too far from their core businesses. Mm -hmm. So I think what you ought to do is to check the financial health of your business. Do you have retained earnings? Do you have extra monies that you can use to invest? But mm -hmm. what you cannot do is to take too much out of your, 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 your no, business to, 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 to invest to in, in, in another area. I have yeah, and, and in addition to what Ron is saying, um, also remember that you would have a, a plan in place. Right. And so depending on where you are in that plan, you can look at, look at where the business is as a, as a whole, holistically, and, and see how you can actually use some of these funds to invest. Or do you need these funds to grow the existing business that you have first to reach a certain point there so that you can invest in new things. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. So, I mean, can I tell you, to thank you so much, gentlemen. No it is such a robust, like, we're seeing so many questions coming in because, you know, SME is hot and the topic is just burning. So we have a question here from Robbie from Zoom. His question is, I don't have a business account. Um, yes. And the money I earn from my business is deposited to my personal account. Would I be able to get a loan? Shamir, you you can answer this question. <laughs> oh boy, Robbie, yeah, thanks for that question. And and I, I love this question because it's gonna reiterate some things. Right. So remember, we encourage persons not to commingle, that's the word, not to commingle business funds with personal funds. Because if it is that you do not separate the two, then you're gonna get flustered and you're not gonna understand where your business is currently and where exactly it should go. And so one of the things I mentioned earlier of the importance of actually opening a business account, because remember with every small business, your aim is to not only make profits, but to move from a small business to a large business, to a, a commercial, a, a huge commercial a company. And so if it is that you need to do that specifically. Opening a business account and separating the funds give you benefit and access to a lot of things that the bank can help you to move your business to the next level. And so some of the things are um, you know, assistance in conveniently paying the suppliers, as I said before, staffing. You can get access to credit um, in terms of, because when you're passing those business funds to the account, the bank is better able now to assess your business, understand, and then see exactly what the business is actually earning and how we can help you. If it is commingled in personal funds, it is very difficult to assess and to understand. And so I encourage you not to do so. Okay, thank you so much, Shamir. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to pause the questions for now. I'm going to go quickly back into a quick conversation with you, gentlemen, and go back to the questions because, I mean, we have lots of questions coming in. But I want to talk to you about reinventing um, your business and staying relevant, you know, in this time. It's important that every business, um, and the pandemic has shown us, oh my gosh, about mm, whether your business is relevant or not. Because a lot of companies, I mean, as you look at it now, if you're not able to be nimble, and move and, and reinvent yourself, then of course your business is no longer in, in existence. We look at the North Coast and we're seeing, you know, hotel. People have to be finding new ways oh, how boy. to um, reinvent themselves and do offerings more marketing locally versus, you know, just on globally because of those restrictions on travel, etc. We've looked at, you know, I, I was speaking to a customer last week who mentioned to me that he was in the business of events planning and what he had to do was quickly look at how to change his business model. What he did was now, move to offer events management online. Mm -hmm. So his business now is part of it is streaming.
So instead, if you're streaming for your wedding, if you want to have large events, he offers that facility with his staff and was able to pivot very well and, you know, and, and to really ensure that his business is moving forward. And in this pandemic, we've learned digital is the buzzword. Oh I mean, you look at it everywhere and you go into different Times Magazine, etc., and Forbes Magazine, you hear about, you know, online, online is critical and how the sales have ramped up because, of course, everybody's now going to that channel. So I want Ron to share with me first. Ron, for your business, you know, how did you um, reinvent yourself, whether it is for the online banking per se? Because I know you were first adverse to that, but, <laughs> but you are now probably an expert, so you can share with us, you know, for, for us, you know, how did you reinvent your company, any strategy at all, and particularly online? Well, online banking, um, you know, is probably the greatest invention since the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> we love to hear that at social. You make us very happy. Oh, but, um... We were very traditional in our banking. We, you know, preferred to walk in the bank, and we, we preferred to, you know, sit, um, stand at the counter, have conversation, and talk. But ever since we have been introduced to um, online banking, we can just never go back. You know, these days I send off my wire transfers in my from my bedroom, from my living room. <laughs> if I'm traveling, I stop. And, and it gives you so much time to do everything else, you know. And you, you I remember uh, Marcia Wunchoy mm -hmm. told us that in, in the action coach that you need to know what your time is worth as a businessman. You know, you, okay. you, you, you divide, you know, how much you earn, you know, by the time and you, you, you are able to assess how much you, you earn per hour. And so one day, you know, when I was at the bank and I was there for quite some time and I looked at the time and I said, but wait, you know, I've just spent, <laughs> you know, when I look at the, the time I spent in the bank, I said, but, you know, I, I've, I've, I've unfairly earned my, 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 my pay because <laughs> I was there for two hours and, and that is something that somebody else could do. So I'm just saying that to say, um, know that you can do access online banking from wherever you are. It just frees you up and you're able to do so many other things. I, I don't know if I can survive without um, online banking. Oh, okay. You know, um, and just to quickly share that, you know, there are things we used to, you know, we pay most of our um, custom duties, you know, by, by a Scotia credit card. And so first thing you'd have to sent to the bank to ask them to transfer the money from your account to put on your card and then you have to wait until the money hits the card. These days you just you just click up a button. You just click the button, <laughs> you pay your duties, you do everything and you don't even need to leave where you are. Excellent. You know, and, and so I, I maintain it's the greatest invention since the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna ask um for Shamir to share one advice that you have for you know for companies, you know how do you stay relevant, reinvent the wheel, especially in this time? Oh, just one? Yeah. Oh, oh, wow, you have to. Okay. Well, well there, there are, I'll, I'll, I'll say two things. Okay. Um, reinvent. Look at, your, look at your current model now. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Rowan mentioned it, you mentioned it as well, Casey, that, you know, what, am I still relevant? So when you look at your business, I had a customer that sells shoes. And so she realizes that she wasn't making as much money as before. Mm -hmm. So what she did was she looked at how she can actually go ahead and improve the services that she gave and improve her profits. And so she reached out to some of the hospitals and started to, prov to provide some of the yeah. crocs looking right. shoes, nurse, that, that nurses wear. And she has a contract now. And that, that, that in, in itself is bringing her funds and her profits to a place where she has never seen it before. Wow. So look at you. Look at where you are. Mm -hmm. Look at what you can provide now yeah. at your existing at your existing stage, and see how best you can deliver on that. And and the last thing I want to say is, Casey, that people, people are important. Remember, small business, the persons in your company are the drivers of your goals, and so we have to ensure that we treat our people with utmost respect, mm -hmm. keep them safe and also ensure that we know exactly what's going on and create a high-performance environment around it. 
Because if it is that we have the head going one way and the body going another way, there's no way the company is going to meet its goals. Mm -hmm. And so we have to ensure that we put our people um, at, the, uh, at the utmost front of everything that we do and become your own risk manager. Last thing, yeah. become your own risk manager. In th this pandemic has, has brought up and identified a lot of things that persons didn't know before. And, and risk goes right across the board. It, it can be exposed to operational risk, foreign exchange risk. I had a customer that, did, uh, that provides staple goods and most of her supplies come from overseas. So she's exposed to foreign exchange risk. So if the, rate, if the rate of exchange goes up, automatically her cost will go up. Mm -hmm. And so she started a, a US account, started accumulating the US, and now she is able to purchase and, and, and mitigate against that foreign exchange risk. So become your own risk manager. So those are the three things I would leave with you guys. Excellent advice. Thank you so much, Shamir, and thank you so okay. much, Ron. Boy, I mean, I'm just loving the conversation. <laughs> we could go on and on, but you know, we're seeing lots of questions coming in from our um, viewers, and I want to go quickly into a few more questions just before we close. Can you believe it's almost close to an end? It feels like we just, we're just we only here for five yeah, minutes, right? So I'm going to move into some questions. <laughs> Do we have a few more questions that um, persons have been burning and, and you know, ask, want to ask us? So let me ask, um, let me look at the questions that we have, and then Ron and Shemri probably can take. So we have a first question. It's from Chantel from Instagram, and her question is, what is the process for getting my business account online? Okay, Chantel, great question. Yeah. Um, we've been, uh, the business bankers have been reaching out to all of our customers to see how we can get them online. I mean, once you talk to your business banker, what they will do is they ensure that all your documentation is up to date first and foremost. And there is just a, a, a it's two, very to, two to three page document that you sign. And we once we send that off, within, within 24 oh. to 48 hours the most, you'll get, you'll get uh, instruction in your email mm -hmm. to complete the process of, of, of completing your online. So first step, speak to your business banker and they will let you know what are the documentation that are probably outdated or you need to update mm -hmm. and have you set up as soon as possible. Great question. All right. So we're probably going to take only probably two questions because um, time. So the other question here is coming from Instagram, from Cash Out Jamaica. And the question is, what, the, what are the requirements for sole proprietors? I'm assuming that they're asking what are the requirements probably for opening an account for sole proprietors? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, think it, I think that's the case. Yes. So, so Cash Out Jamaica, um, you know, when sole traders come to me to open an account, the first thing I ask them is because the business has to be registered. And so when I ask them for the registration, I tell them that this is basically three quarters of the requirements already. Once the business is registered, you, you need um, proof of address for the business, which is on the business registration, the TRN for the business on the business registration. Um, you would need the KYC, KYC documents, meaning the IDs mm -hmm. and the TRN of the owner of the business itself. And also, depending on how long the business has been operating, and the size of the business, you would also need to provide financials and also TCC. Okay, thank you so much, Shamir. So this is our final question. And the question is coming from Sim, and Sim from Zoom, and her question is, how long before will I be qualified for a business loan? You get this question very often, right? Man, uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Sim, you, you, you are asking the question that almost everybody usually asks me um, <laughs> in my field of work. Uh, but I will say there is, there is really no specific time. Um, it really just depends on once you start the relationship with Scotiabank and you have your business banker, all it takes now is really an assessment. Um, we look at how long the business has been operating. Depending on how long you have been operating will depend on what we will require of you in order to get um, a, a business loan done. So for example, um, if it is that you're purchasing an equipment, you know, um, you can use the, we will ask for probably a business plan. We want to run over the numbers just to see where the business is going. We'll probably ask for extra security because in, everybody knows this, in business, usually there's a higher risk of failing within the first two years. And so we have to ensure that as a bank doing business, and I'm sure that you do that with your customers as well, we ask for additional security at that point. So that is really the, the answer. But call us, 
if you if you already if you have a business banker already reach out to them they will be able to assess and tell you exactly um what you can get currently and if you if it is that you want to reach a certain point they will be able to guide you on your way on getting there okay Thank you so much, Shamira. Thank you so much, Ron. It has been a fantastic afternoon. I mean, we could go on and on, right? It has been very engaging. And we're actually at the end of today's um, session. I mean, I can't believe time has, when did time go so fast? But I just want to leave with you our, part, um, our customers and also persons who are watching via Zoom or Instagram. You know, there's some key things that you need to remember. You're an SME right now. What I want to say to you, just please to remember the important thing, speak to a business banker. You know, let them give you some advice. If you do not have a business banking account, you need to get one so that we can, your business can be more structured. You need to ensure that your business is registered and you also have all the necessary documentation. We want to say to you, capitalize on all the opportunities that are available right now for small business. Do some research, find out what, um, what grants are available, you know, what um, other facilities are available for me to take up. And also importantly, manage your debt, right? It's important that you look at yourself, assess your business and look also, is my business doing well? Can it propel forward? You know, what do I need to make sure that I'm successful? Speak to your business banker. I, can, I can't reiterate that because, I mean, so many times because it's very, very important. At Scotia Bank, we actually love every one of our customers and we want to welcome everyone who, you know, looking to, to move their business forward. We're there to support you. And so if you have more questions that we're not able to answer today, we're going to ask you, please, to quickly send us an email. You can send us an email at bnsj.businessbanking at scotiabank.com. Just send us an email at bnsj.businessbanking at scotiabank.com. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible. You can visit our branches and speak to any of our business bank or any questions anything that you need. We're here for you. And thank you so much for joining us today for another series in Scotia Live. And it has been a pleasure to be with you. I am Casey Johnson Vaughan. Thanks for having me this afternoon. And we look forward to continue serving you.